Oh, welcome back my uh, gardening friends uh, December 9th 2023 uh, somebody's taken on this plot now so I can cease my uh, help in uh, clearing it it's obviously worked in uh, a good way because that gentleman has now taken it on and before you go today please leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the interaction and of course leave me a comment why not consider uh, subscribing uh, the asparagus this is getting on now for four years old next year I'll be able to harvest fully uh, I think you can leave it till three but I uh, did leave it uh, we harvest only for six weeks and then we let the, the rest go to fern and as you can see there there's uh, still quite a few uh, little seeds and they will fall down I have been pulling them out but they do uh, grow uh, very easily and as you can see it's leaving itself a mulch anyway so a little bit of pause and record we'll get this cut down I'm going to save all these ferns tie them up and uh, put them in my wildflower wildlife garden uh, for the birds to eat the rest of the berries and maybe some wildlife uh, overwintering in there and for anyone that uh, doesn't know I had a volunteer asparagus on plot one and we took some of the berries we saved them and this is what we've ended up with it's a long-term process but well worth it having a permanent bed of uh, asparagus very windy today guys hope you stay on the tripod and as you can see uh, these strops have done really well I intertangled them as they were growing and it's helped me being able to walk up and down each side of the paths without too much issue as you know if you don't they'll just flop over and those green strops are single use then they have to be thrown away they're like lifting uh, lifting straps so I've given them another life well it keeps on raining on me I have to keep darting so I'll probably uh, just cut a bit more out and then start mulching up we'll empty the underground worm farms that's what you can see there those three and uh, then we'll move the ferns to the uh, wildlife area keeping our asparagus, asparagus beds uh, weed free is key to having a, a good uh, crop uh, throughout the season out of season etc so let's give that a, a little bit of fertile a little bit of a fertile and while the birds were enjoying the berries last year they uh, pooped out uh, uh, a holly berry seed and uh, a raspberry look at those runners on the uh, the raspberry uh, roots they do get everywhere that's what happens the berries that have fallen on the floor we're going to leave let's get a close-up of the underground worm farms so I've just recycled this bit of an old round sign uh, this is the cardboard or was oh it still is and uh, lots and lots of creatures I don't mind the odd slug and uh, there's lots and lots of life down here and uh, again look at the uh, material we've got there and we'll just uh, spread that out equally and the asparagus roots love it so I do need to get some more material in there so that uh, those roots uh, can keep feeding and the idea of the underground worm farms are that the worms come in uh, eat and digest the food and they crawl in and out through the holes and then when I feed the middle bin they sense that there's new food about and they'll travel between the worm bins underground worm farms and poop and pee on the way which helps the asparagus he says hopefully and you can see we've started the mulching process by adding uh, all the materials that we've added throughout the season via uh, our uh, waste vegetable uh, matter 
So these uh, ferns are in the way at the moment. At the moment I've just tied a, a loop in there and then what we do, we thread this part through and then that helps you uh, pull it tight. I'll try and show you that uh, once I've got sorted. Still got cold and wet here in the UK at the moment. Um, but uh, instead of just trying to do a, a knot, you can just loop that through. Just keep pulling it. And hope it doesn't break, he says. So I'll uh, have another go at that. I'm trying to use this instead of uh, nylon. See, it's a rot down, so I've just got to be a little bit easier how, I, how tight I pull it. So that's that all together and sorted. I'll be uh, nice and careful how we carry it across and we'll uh, add it to the uh, wildlife area. I'm sure, oh, he fell over. I'm sure the uh, wildlife birds are going to enjoy that and anybody can get inside that and uh, overwinter if they need to. And then we'll see what it looks like next year, whether we uh, add it and put it underneath the, uh, that bamboo there. That, absolutely everything is uh, wet through and uh, hopefully anybody that's living in the canes etc, they're old, uh, I think they're uh, sunflowers from two years ago they're still doing all right I'm just going to try and lift the underground firm underground worm farms up a little bit so it can take a little bit more manure and to protect the worms I'll give it a nice little covering of cocoa koi that's got the uh, added perlite that we uh, find that's unscrupulously dumped by those uh, unscrupulously uh, growers. And, uh, and that is if uh, this, uh, these gales that we're, the UK is suffering uh, at the moment doesn't blow it all away while it's still dry. Well, that's that little job done. And as you can see, I've got my Finville uh, uh, winter boots on. I should be sitting on my uh, chair as well that sits on here, but it's uh, wet through. But you've got to remember, you can't keep taking, you have to keep giving something back. This is all sorted now. The underground worm farms will get topped up as soon as I get my next batch of peelings, vegetables from home. I'll chop them up, add a few little ingredients, the eggshells for the worms to help digest the food because they haven't got teeth, etc. If you have a look at my playlist, uh, homemade liquid plant foods, uh, and compost mixes, etc. There's loads of videos there for you to, to watch. The playlists are so important to focus on the certain things, so I will put them on the end screens and it's well worth you uh, waiting to have a look. I'm going to try and get rid of the other rubbish. I'll show you my manure bin. We're getting down it now, thank goodness, because the other one is now full and I shan't add any more to this one. And I'm struggling to keep up with, oh, it's overflowing again. I'm struggling to keep up uh, with, uh, oh, that's a sheet gone, it is windy, guys. Uh, keeping up with uh, emptying uh, the, uh, the manure runoff. Anybody that hasn't seen this, it's uh, it's uh, liquid uh, liquid black gold, and I hate to waste it. But these wood chips around here will be uh, nicely uh, drenched. So we filled this one up, and now we're getting right down to uh, the bottom. And uh, there's the uh, bit of wire to stop the solids going through. And it's uh, half a IBC with a bit of plastic sheeting round to direct the juices down and out into.
into there. I haven't had much off that, as you'd probably expect. It's well worth collecting. I've just had to chase that sheet uh, from another plot holder's uh, <laughs> garden. It is a bit blowy, but at least it's dry. And uh, this will settle down nicely. We'll be using this uh, autumn of uh, 2024. And I'm slowly getting down the compost that's uh, unscrupulously dumped by those cannabis growers. And uh, this isn't the best of material, but it's organic. And uh, adding the liquid plant foods, comfrey, manure, nettles just gives it that little bit of a boost. I did top the rhubarb up uh, with the same on top of the manure just to keep those worms uh, happy and alive but we also have to look after Mr Robin. I'm glad I didn't stake all these uh, brassicas up either. Well I'm losing the light now guys I'm going to finish off when I can uh, the sun's uh, slowly setting in the uh, distance. My feet are warm and I've got a bit of a sweat on. But it's surprising what you can do in an hour. And I'll be talking about how I manage my time on the allotments. A bit of time management. An hour here and there. It does help. gardening to you all. Until next time my friends. Ta-ra for now. <laughs>